Inspector David Kaye said last week, quote, we were all wrong about Saddam's WMD. By right now, the world knows there was a massive intelligence failure in the war on Iraq. President Bush and other countries... The failure to find Saddam Hussein's alleged weapons of mass destruction has raised serious questions about the legitimacy and legality of the ongoing war in Iraq. But as both American and Iraqi casualties escalate, and as the conflict becomes more chaotic and deadly by the day, Debate within the United States continues to focus narrowly on whether American intelligence agencies provided accurate enough information to justify going to war. In the process, a larger question has been all but ignored. It is a story that begins as the Cold War ends, a story about a group of self-identified radical conservatives at the right-wing extreme of the Republican Party a group of intellectuals and policymakers who saw the fall of the Soviet Union and communism not as an opportunity to scale back America's Cold War military machine, but as an opportunity to build up its size and scale, to use military force more aggressively and unilaterally, to construct a new, unchallenged American empire. A colossus athwart the world, a new Rome, beyond good and evil. We no longer need friends, we don't need international law, uh, like the old Roman phrase, it doesn't matter whether they love us or not so long as they fear us. In their defining document, written in September of 2000, a full year before 9-11, they acknowledge that the process of transformation, even if it brings revolutionary change, is likely to be a long one. Absent, in their own chilling words, some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. Fear, anger, rage, vengeance. I think all of us, if we're human, had that reaction. The question for all of us is what we remember and what we do with the memories. What is the lesson? What does it tell? What does it teach? For the president, it teaches the lesson the axis of evil. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil. That's one kind of lesson. It creates a politics of fear. This is a gang that, that, that needs people to be afraid. It's a gang that really can't have any political success whatsoever. Uh, in, a, in a state of um, tranquility. America on high alert. We have an intelligence report that terrorists are about to attack. Who? We don't know. Where? We don't know. What? We don't know. But you tell us, so now we're afraid. The problem for the Bush administration is that plans that already existed for regime change in Iraq had to be justified. The liberation of Iraq is a crucial advance in the campaign against terror. We've removed an ally of Al-Qaeda. Lieutenant Colonel Karen Kwiatkowski worked in the Pentagon's Near East and South Asia office. She witnessed how the Office of Special Plans issued talking points about Iraq for senior government officials. The very things that a year later, President Bush himself denies and, and feigns his surprise. I don't know why everybody thinks that. We, we, we've had no evidence that Saddam Hussein was involved with the September the 11th. Well, I worked in a place where they concentrated on on preparing this storyline and selling it to everyone that they could possibly sell it to. What there was there was the sense that Iraq had to be invaded because it was the first step in going toward American empire. The major reason to take Iraq was a display of imperial power, it was to show both the Arab world, but not just them, but to show Europe and the Far Eastern Bloc, China and the Koreans, who was master. The idea to blitz the capital with bombs to stun the Iraqis into a quick surrender. This is the beginning of the shock and awe campaign. According to one official, this is going to be the entire nine yards. It was a breathtaking display of firepower. And the Pentagon says, we ain't seen nothing yet. I understand that they want the American public to believe that the invasion of Iraq was the response to September 11th. I think it is a lie. These guys should be brought up on charges. There should be an investigation about whether these guys should be allowed to serve our country anymore. Because to me, it's criminal to say, we're going to send our troops to war based on uh, falsified intelligence, 
based on puffed up, exaggerated details. My problem is I've been to Washington, D.C. and stood in the middle of the night out in the Jefferson Memorial and read the inscriptions of Jefferson's quotes that are hammered into the marble. And you look up inside the rotunda, the, the favored quote at the highest point of the building, you have to turn around backwards to read it. He says, on the altar of God, I pledge undying hostility to any government restriction on the free minds of the people. We were the first nation state to establish the principle that sovereignty, ultimate political power resides in the people. That's a fundamentally radical concept. And these guys don't like the implications of it for their maintenance of minority wealth and power. And they're out to destroy that, but they will fail. I guarantee you they will fail.